Hello friends and welcome to Quarantine Cocktails, a little mini show um, from Blame It On Buffett. And uh, if you have never listened to Blame It On Buffett before, which is the podcast, that's totally okay. Just uh, This is just for fun to make a cocktail because it's Sunday and we're all at home and you know, sometimes you just want a painkiller, but sometimes you don't have everything you need to make a painkiller exactly. So you're going to just use whatever you have in your house, which is kind of what is going to happen right now. Um, we're gonna go on an adventure together. So we're gonna make the not as good as soggy dollar painkiller for quarantine using what we have. Um, necessity is another invention as they say and this is necessity right now. We need this. So um, what we're gonna start with is uh, normally painkillers use a coconut, cream of coconut, but all I have is this can of coconut cream, which I had in my pantry. Um, <laughs> great, there's cats. Uh, <laughs> sorry, hold on. Um, which is not the same as cream of coconut. The main difference from what I gather is that it is unsweetened and cream of coconut is quite sweet. So to remedy that, we are going to um, give our handy blender here. We're going to uh, mix this. Oh my God, <laughs> guys. This is, of course, when the cats are deciding to be totally bad right now. They were just sleeping all day before this. Please stop that, thank you. I'm sure as soon as I turn on the blender, they'll run away, so it's fine. Um, so we're emptying this can of coconut cream into our blender. Um, early, a little bit earlier, I prepared, since I didn't really think you would want to watch me just like boil water, um, I made a quick little simple syrup, which I have here in a jar. So basically, I'm not, I don't know if there is a recipe for turning coconut cream into cream of coconut. I'm not really using one. I'm just going to pour a little bit, bit in of this at a time and blend it up. Um, so it's sort of to taste. The beauty of this, I guess, if you want something a little less sweet than what cream of coconut is, because <laughs> I, <laughs> I um, I'm like not a huge sweet drink fan and painkillers usually aren't like super sweet, but this is a way to make it a little less sweet or as sweet or not sweet <laughs> as you want. <laughs> um, and, okay, let's see. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in here to start. I'm gonna measure it out actually. We're gonna do about an ounce of that. And then I'm just gonna waz it up for a minute as Jamie Oliver would say. Um, Let's see. Oh, I probably should have done this part ahead of time too, so you don't have to listen to the blender, but sorry about that. Just cover yours for a second. sweet already it says unsweetened but I wonder if it was I mean I guess it's a coconut from a coconut which is a little sweet already but I don't want to make it too sweet right now um, so I think I'm gonna just do this and then we can always add a little more simple syrup in later if we want like when we're making the actual cocktail <laughs> listen to that anymore okay put our simple syrup away and actually I'm not gonna put it away yet just in case we need more I'm gonna put it right there um but I just realized that I don't have the juice out yet so I'm gonna grab that so one second oh okay got it 
we have like more groceries in our fridge right now than like ever before because now we're just like stocked up um when normally it was like oh well we can just go to the grocery store and get stuff and now it's like with our one grocery order we have to get like every possible thing that we could need so yeah it's kind of full in there okay so um regular painkillers have pineapple juice and orange juice um once again that is not possible in this situation um the the last time i got groceries the only thing they had um was so I, I tried to get orange pineapple simply juice but they were out or whatever so instead i have um simply tropical juice drink um which looks like maybe pineapple and mango yeah pineapple mango are the main flavor flavors in there so once again that's not exactly the same um, as a regular painkiller, but I know sometimes painkillers have like a little mango rum or something else in there. So maybe this, I mean, really, I think you could kind of do whatever you want, but especially since we're doing a quarantine style, um, that means that we're just using whatever we have on hand. And for me, it's simply tropical juice drink, which I like how they call it juice drink instead of juice. Um, it is a little sweeter, so I think that's the difference when it's like a juice drink versus like just straight fresh juice, is it has a little bit of other things added to it, including a little bit of sugar. So that's also why I didn't want to over sweeten the coconut, um, because this is a little sweeter than your regular juice, I think. So I don't want the drink to come out like too sweet in the end. Okay, so we have our juice. Um, so the ingredients for painkillers, if you didn't know, are uh, cream of coconut, orange juice and pineapple juice, rum, once again, like if you're making like a real good painkiller, you'd want to get like Pusser's rum or something else, you know, to be like really traditional. But what I happen to have is this giant bottle of Sailor Jerry rum. That's the only thing that I have uh, in my cupboard. We drink a lot of beer mostly because my husband is a brewer so um, we don't actually have a lot of hard alcohol. We don't make cocktails that often um, so it's kind of like a sad state of affairs in our little under the sink alcohol cabinet. It's like big old thing of Sailor Jerry Spice rum, like a thing of like this much random silver tequila, like a, this much super old gin that I've had for like 10 years. I don't know why. Um, and then like peppermint schnapps. So Really, we're just making do with what we have. But luckily, we do have some rum, which is really, I think, the important part is that it is rum. Obviously, this is a rum cocktail. So hopefully, Soggy Dollar and, and all the places in the BVI that make amazing actual painkillers won't judge us too harshly for this. Um, okay, so we have that. So we have that. And then the last thing that we want is nutmeg. Now, if you're having like a really good traditional painkiller, you want to get a fresh nutmeg, grate that on top. Um, but once again, we don't have that. And honestly, like I probably wouldn't have that even if we weren't under quarantine. So what we do have is this um, super sketchy unlabeled bottle. Um, but you can trust me when I say that it is nutmeg in there. Uh, yeah, maybe sometime I should try it with an actual fresh nutmeg because like it really is better. Um, but any nutmeg that you have is better than no nutmeg. And I personally think this is, I think, a personal preference because like some people maybe don't care about the nutmeg that much or they don't like nutmeg. Um, but like, I think the nutmeg is a super important part of what makes a painkiller. It just adds that little extra something so that it's not just like fruity coconut, you know, like the nutmeg on top is just like what makes it, that's like what makes it. So, um, but I'm a big nutmeg fan. So gotta have the nutmeg for me so I'm gonna have that um <clears throat> okay so I think we have everything that we need oh we need ice let's get some ice okay we have our ice here and I'm just gonna take this oop, lid off of there get everything ready okay so we have our handy dandy cocktail shaker right here um this is like an old vintage one. I don't really remember where I got it, um, but it's cute, right? Right? 
Um, okay, so we're gonna put a couple ice cubes in the cocktail shaker so that when we shake everything up together, it's gonna be like real nice and cold in there. Um, we don't have an ice machine, we just have two ice trays, so I'm gonna be kind of conservative on the ice. Um, but if you have a lot of ice at home, just go to town on that because you wanna have really like to have like a good, actually, I don't really know. I'm not like a professional bartender, but it seems like you definitely want to use separate ice in your cocktail that you're shaking than in your glass. Um, Cause you just want, you want to pour it over fresh ice. So use a couple ice cubes in here. Um, and then you're going to want to put separate ice into your cups. Um, <laughs> no, please don't do that. Thank you. <sighs> okay. Okay. So I have a couple ice cubes in here. So I'm going to do, um, so you could do like, Per cocktail, you could do like two ounces to four ounces. It depends on how much rum, how rummy you like it. Um, I'm gonna do, I think four, but because I'm hoping to get maybe two cocktails out of this, two smallish size. So that would be like two ounces per cocktail. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this is kind of small. I don't think it'll fit everything for two. Okay, I'm gonna do, well, I already poured this. Okay, we'll do three, <laughs> do three, why not? Um, okay, so then we have our juice. <clears throat> okay, so you want, I don't know if you're supposed to put the stuff in in a certain order. Um, I don't know if it really matters. Maybe we'll do, actually, maybe we'll do the coconut cream next. So, for the coconut cream, I can get a good grip on this. Um, we're gonna do, without dropping it, one ounce of this in there. Yeah, that's good. It's like all nice and foamy and yummy. Um, and it probably won't use all of this, but I just like made the whole can and then I'll just put it in the refrigerator um, and maybe use it for cocktails another day or whatever. Okay, and then we want, um, so the recipe that I'm using uh, has four ounces of pineapple juice and one ounce of orange juice, but because we only have this one kind of juice, I'm just gonna do um, five ounces of it. Since it's the only juice we have. And those were like pretty loose ounces, to be honest. I was maybe even under pouring, but I wanna make sure that I have enough room to shake this up. Um, actually, I'm gonna put one more ice cube in there. Okay, so then, um, oh my gosh, there's a cat here in here. You guys, you know, if you have cats or dogs, like, just gets everywhere. It's out of control. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to put a couple ice cubes in here so it's ready to be poured onto. And then I'm going to put my lid right on here. And then I shake it. Um, the, so I'll make sure I'm not spilling any of it. All right. I'm not really sure how our coconut, um, cream of coconut that we made is gonna dissolve into there. It might be a little chunky, so I just wanna make sure, um, cause it's a little different uh, than if you're using actual uh, coconut, like actual cream of coconut. Okay, but I think it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to pour it into my cup, which um, if you notice, I am using an actual little cup that I got at the Soggy Dollar. Um, and it has the little original painkiller story on the back here. So it's very fitting for this. Um, and then my second cup, which Maybe there actually is gonna be enough in here for these little cups. So, um, is also, it's not from Painkiller, but it is also from, it's from um, White Bay on, on Joe's Van Dyke, um, which is also where paint, the Soggy Dollar Bar is. Um, so, there is some contention about whether it's Joe's Van Dyke or Yost Van Dyke. Uh, when we were there, I asked like locals and they were like, eh, you could say it either way. I'm like, no, but like, how do you say it? And they're like, well, really you could say it. Like, 
even like amongst people that live there, they're kind of like, whatever, it's cool. Um, <clears throat> but then I asked like one of the guys and he was like, he's like, well, I say Joe's fan dyke. So, and that's kind of my preference anyway, because I think the hard J sounds better than Yoast Van Dyke. Um, I guess Yoast Van Dyke would probably be the more Dutch way of saying it, but whatever. Joe's Van Dyke is what we're, that's how we're rolling here in this house today. So, um, so both of these are from different places on Joe's Van Dyke. So I'm just going to open this a little bit so that it can pour through, but not pour the ice in there. Just going to pour that, oops, spilling just a little bit. Okay, let's see. Wow, this is like a super awkward amount. So there's definitely not enough to pour into this cup, um, but I'll just have to pour it into here once I've uh, taken it down a little bit, if you know what I mean. Okay, so then um, we're gonna put the nutmeg just right on top. And if you had a fresh nutmeg, you'd have like one of those little graters. I feel like there's a name for it that I can't think of right now, but we don't. So we're just gonna sprinkle this on here, like so. Um, and I like a lot of nutmeg, so. This is like, once again, you can just do it to your personal preference. Um, and yeah, there you have it. You have your quarantine, not as good as a soggy dollar painkiller. So let's give it a try and see how it is. pretty good. Once again, not as good as soggy dollar. I would say probably take the rum down a little bit. As you can see, like this juice is kind of, maybe you can't actually tell, but it's a little thinner than like real juice. Um, so you can definitely sort of taste that. I would say maybe the next one I'll do more coconut cream and uh, maybe a little less rum. I kind of got carried away with the rum, but I think two ounces of rum for this size cup is just right. Um, maybe two ounces of the coconut um, and then maybe like four to five ounces of the juice. So for my next one, this is the exciting part you guys, is I could just make more, yay! So you can tailor it however you want um, to your own taste. And yeah, I guess I could add more simple syrup directly, but I feel like I really just want more coconut flavor. Um, like if not necessarily like a lot more sweetness, just more coconut flavor, maybe like a little more sweet. So I'll probably just add more of the coconut, cream of coconut to the next one, but not, um, not more straight simple syrup, but we'll see, we'll play around with it a little bit. So that is uh, the not as good as a soggy dollar quarantine painkiller. Um, it's 2.42 on Sunday, which in my opinion is the perfect time for drinking painkillers. I mean, really every time, any time is good for that, I think. Um, so yeah, I hope this inspires you to maybe make something fun from whatever you have in your house. I say, I know some people are like, you know, cocktail pure, like they're like big on cocktails and they're like, are really good at making them and they know how to make them. Um, and that's great. And if I could have a perfectly made painkiller, I would, but I think if you can just go with what you have, it's better than nothing. So, so yeah, maybe check check around, look in your liquor, liquor cabinet. Um, what do you have on hand that could make maybe a version of a cocktail that you love but don't have the exact ingredients for? Um, you can, you know, you can make do. Just, I had like kind of the stuff to make this drink. Not really exactly, but, but it's, just, it's pretty good. I think I might go drink this right now, watch Pirates of the Caribbean, just like get in that tropical afternoon vibe. Um, I hope that you are doing as well as possible during this quarantine time and that this maybe helped a little. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do more of these in the future if it's something that people seem like they had a good time. Um, like I said, it's gonna be interesting to see what I can make with the other like weird three weird liquors that I have in there but um, we can maybe come up with something fun so um, I'm hoping to do an episode soon with uh, my friend Laura who is who actually is like an amazing cocktail artist and bartender 
um, like so good. So um, that should be some inspiration, hopefully too, for everybody. And um, yeah, until until then, um, I hope I hope you are making some fun drinks and enjoying your time at home as best you can. Um, yeah, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.